Erickson, Chris de Blasio, Showtime here. How you doing? Nah, get you uh, your mic turned on. About a mic check there, Erickson. Yep. One, two, three, four, five. That's good. That's perfect. Uh, I'm gonna. This is Chris de Blasio here. I'm gonna mute myself shortly. Have a neighborhood beautification project going on outside. Sorry for the background noise. Um, the new normal work from home. So we have about uh, 25 members of the press on the line. We'll get to them for a few questions. I'd like to ask you how you feeling, some opening comments, uh, what you expect uh, on Saturday night. Are we starting now? Uh, yes, please go ahead. I feel great. Um, I had a tremendous training camp once again. And um, Saturday night, I'm expecting to come out there and look my best and come out with a dominant victory. So a lot on the line, uh, you know, you had a lone setback in your career a few fights ago. Uh, same with Terrell Cachet. You both seem to be on the same trajectory. Uh, this is a title eliminator. Um, how do you expect to overcome what Terrell is going to bring? What do you expect for Terrell to bring, and how do you want to overcome that? I'm expecting him to come solid. But, you know, um, the, way, the, way, the way I train, the way we train, um, I'm going to have an answer for everything he comes with. That's terrific. All right, cool. Let's, uh, let's take some questions from the press. Um, we'll start with Sean Zatel from Fight Hype. Sean, go ahead. Hey, Erickson, man. Um, how you doing? Everything good? Doing good. <laughs> good. Um, do you remember watching – I know he's got 10 years on you. Do you remember watching Terrell uh, Goucher in the Olympics back in 2012 at all? I do remember. I do remember watching him in the Olympics. What, what, what have you thought about him when you were watching him then and even, you know, over his career in the Lara fight and, and fighting him now, you know, after watching him at 12 years old? Um, I didn't, I, I, be on, to be honest with you, I ain't think, I ain't think too much of him. Um, I, I, I knew he was, in a, he was on an Olympic team. I was rooting for him to win. But um, now we're in the pro ranks and it's a whole, whole different ball game. It's a, to, a totally different story. And um, Saturday night, I can't wait, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be something special. When you, when you've been able to watch him, though, how do you size him up? What level of fighter is he, in your opinion? Uh, to me, he's just a solid. He, he's a solid fighter. Like I say, he's a solid fighter. I feel like I'm on a different level from him. I feel like um, I'm better than him, of course, and um, I'm gonna be able to prove that on Saturday night. I mean, you in uh, earlier you made a statement last year against Ishay Smith. Is is that the kind of performance you want and not just a victory but a, a statement kind of performance of course of course I always want to go out there and um um get get the knockout get the stoppage and you know that, that's always what, what every fighter wants but you know if if that doesn't come then I'm in shape I'm ready to fight for 12 I'm ready to fight for 15 rounds so, you know that's the type of shape I'm in and I know you dared to be great at 21 you you challenged for the title but you know, is this, is, is the Ishe Smith fight, the Gallimore fight, fight in Goucher, is this the kind of seasoning you, you may be needed and you feel you needed for when that second opportunity comes? For sure, for sure. You know, um, fighting for the world title at just 22 years old, you know, it did a lot to my game. It just brought me to another level. And, you know, getting those fights under my belt, like Ishe Smith, um, Nathaniel Gallimore, and now Terrell Goucher, you know, so the next next go around for the title would definitely be different. I'm more seasoned, more experienced, and I feel I feel like I'm at my best right now. And obviously, you're focused on Saturday night with Goucher, but can you know what what do you think about facing the Charlo Rosario winner? You'll be the mandatory for that belt should you win uh, Saturday night. Yeah, that's the that's the mandatory. We I'm fighting for that mandatory spot, and you know I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for the um getting in the ring with one of those guys to not just fight for one of the straps, but fight for all, 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 all three straps. And lastly, does part of you hope it's Charlo that wins so you can run that back with him? You know, I'm not, I'm not chasing, I'm not chasing Charlo. I'm chasing those titles. So if he wins, you know, so be it. And, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to a rematch with Charlo, but, um, you know, like I said, I'm looking forward to them titles. That's what I'm, that's what I'm chasing. Thanks, Erickson. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sean. We'll go to uh, James Conlon 
James with RCB Radio Sport Ireland. James, go ahead. Hello, Ericsson. Uh, we spoke to you on the past in RCB Sport Ireland. We spoke to you before the Nathaniel Gallimor fight, and we had you on the air there, and you said you were, you were going to make a statement against Gallimor, and you were going to bounce back and bounce back in style, and you did that, and you did that very comprehensively against Gallimor. You almost felt oh, since a sense of anger, a sense of redemption of, of, from you ahead of that Gallimore fight, that you were eager to put Charlo behind you and get on and move to the next level, the next step. And your opponent, Terrell Gaucher, he's probably the same sort of sense, the same sort of mentality. He probably thinks the exact same. He wants to move to that next step in that ladder as well. But for one of you, it's going to be two steps up the ladder. And for the other one, it's going to be three steps down. But... Um, for you, I suppose, Ericsson, you said you were going to make a statement against uh, Natalia Gallimore. Are you going to make it the same sort of statement or an even bigger one against Terrell? For sure. That's that's the plan. That's how I train. I train to go in there and make a statement. And Saturday night, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and I suppose looking at the sort of fight, you you almost felt that your boxing skills would be get the better of Gallimore. I suppose... Terrell Gaucher, he's a sort of a, a different sort of opponent, a more slick sort of customer. What are you ex sort of expecting for him? Is this going to be a more tactical, sort of cagey sort of a fight, uh, given that he's, an, oh, he's a step up in class again from what Gallimore was? Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like I feel like um, I just got to be steps ahead of him. And um, I feel like my, my boxing skills is the best in the division. And I'm going to be able to show it on Saturday night. You know, that whatever he want to do, I could do it better than him. If he wants to box, I could box better than him. If he wants to bang, I could bang better than him. I'm sure it on Saturday night. And I suppose lastly, Erickson, uh, before I leave you, you said the, uh, the last question that you weren't the or concentrating on whoever holds the title. It wasn't really about Charlo. But wouldn't it be much sweeter for you if Charlo was victorious that you could redempt that sort of blotch that is that's probably still itching away at you to try and get another crack at him so I suppose you probably you you want the title holder and it doesn't matter who that is but would it be much the sweeter for you if it was Charlo you were facing again of course revenge is bittersweet and you know the best revenge is success but you know also if I get the get in the ring with Charlo once again and show him that I'm a I'm a total different fighter and, you know, so be it. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Ericsson, best luck from all of us here in Ireland. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, bud. Okay, James, appreciate that. Uh, let's go to Jeremy Herridges, fansided.com. Jeremy? Hi, Ericsson. Um, I, uh, I was curious, in preparing for, for this fight, um, did you study film? And in particular, did you, did you take a special look at his recent fights against uh, Southpaws uh, with Trout and uh, uh, Lara? Yeah, I did some studying. I did studying with um, the, the Lara fight, with the Trout fight, um, a few other fights. But um, mostly my, my trainers, my trainers they, they look into that more than I do. But I seen what I what I needed to see. My trainers um, seen what uh, they needed to see, and you know we we got a game plan and we ready to execute on Saturday night. Looking at his record, obviously it's it's a, it's a strong record. But the one uh, draw and the one loss have come against Southpaws. Do you think it's the fighters that gave him problems, or do you think that in part the Southpaw stance gives him problems? I'm um, a little bit of both. A little bit of both for sure. Um, I feel like he has um, a little bit of problems with southpaws, but you know, um, I'm, I'm not. I'm not looking at that. You know, I'm, I got a game plan. I'm ready to execute. I'm ready to come out victorious on Saturday night. In order for this fight to be a success for you, other than just winning, um, is it more about how how dominant you are in this fight? What's your main objective here? I mean, both. Uh, I definitely, you know, got to come out there and win and I also want to go out there and uh, win in style. I want to look good winning and you know um, that way we leave behind a, um, a good report. Uh, going back to, to your to your one loss um, you know there's a, a bunch of ways you could look at it as one could be you know disappointment or the other is something to learn from. How do you look at it and if you did learn something from it what was the most important thing you took away from that fight? I mean, it's definitely something to, um, to learn from. 
it's also disappointing because, you know, I, I definitely, you know, I, I dared to be great. Uh, I want to be a, one of the, I wanted to be one of those fighters to, you know, win a world title early. But I definitely learned that, you know, um, experience is a is a great teacher. And, you know, I, I took that I took that from that fight, brought it with me and bounced back. And I'm still bouncing back in a great way. And um, I soon take over this division. Erickson, thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you. It is refreshing to see you take a, take a step back and take it uh, in stride and, and get back to where you've gone so far, Erickson. So happy to see that. Same with your opponent across the ring. So we're looking forward to Saturday night for sure. Um, let's go to Alan Jones in the ring with Alan Jones. Erickson Lubin, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm good. Good, good. Al Jones from in the ring. This fight here, I mean, you, you pre you've been prepared. You, you prepared yourself very well. Um, training was good. You were, you have one of the best coaches in the game. What advantages do you have that will separate you, uh, and, 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 you know, lead you to a victory in this particular match? Um, I feel like, uh, my advantage is that, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm definitely, I feel like I'm more determined than he is. Um, I'm younger than he is also. Like um, in every department, I feel like I, I, I got the edge in almost every department, the speed, the power, the footwork, the um, defense. I feel like I feel like I'm just one step ahead of him. OK, and also also on in the ring with Al Jones when you were on the show. Excuse me, a couple steps ahead of him. A couple steps ahead of him. OK, yeah. all right. And also. Um, Going forward, what will it mean? What will this win a win mean to you? Going on on us, I mean, it'll it'll mean a lot. Everyone, I, I take everyone, you know, um, it, all my wins are special to me, and they mean something to me. Um, it'll be just uh, one more step to the title. You know, this is gonna be for the uh, mandatory slot with the WBC, and you know, um, after this, you know, sky's the limit. I get to fight for uh, not just one belt, but three belts. And any predictions? Will it go the distance, or are you predicting a TKO or knockout? Whatever happens, you know. Um, if I get the knockout, sweet. But you know, I'm 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 in shape. I'm ready to fight 12 rounds. I'm ready just to just get the win. All right. Thank you for your time, and, and good luck to you this weekend. Thank you. Well, we've seen the energy and some personalities coming from the co-features earlier today, uh, Erickson, and now we're feeling it from you and from your opponent before. So I um, know it's going to be a big night. Uh, Reggie Woodson, you're up. Hey, how you doing, uh, Erickson? I'm doing good. Hey, look, you know, uh, you know, after fights, man, we we get online and everything and, and, and fighters. You know, we, we criticize them and hold things against fighters and whatnot, especially uh, knockdowns and knockouts. Uh, do you think to this point that you've kind of um, in control of the narrative about who Erickson Lubin is as a fighter? Well, I know who I am as a fighter. Um, I, that's why I walk around with my, you know, my head held high, even after a loss, um, because I knew I'll bounce, I'll bounce back. Just made it, needed to make a few changes in my life. I made the changes, um, bounced back in a great way, and I'm, I'm looking to take over the division. Got you. You're still a v very confident guy, uh, very firm in how you carry yourself and whatnot, but uh, what's the difference in the energy pre-Charlo and now in these last few fights? Well, you know, I, 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 train, hard. I, train, I, I train hard for that fight with Charlo, but... Um, I just knew I needed to bounce back. You know, the way I trained with uh, Kevin Cunningham and camp, you know, we got a game plan that, you know, um, I, I believe I believe in him the way he believes in me. And, you know, this is how I am. This is just me. All right, and, and with the unification coming up a week after you guys, you know, what's the, uh, what's the ideal statement for uh, Erickson Lubin to make before, the, champ, before the, the, the unification fight as well as to the fans? Well, I just want to go out there and be my best. And um, I know with me being my best, you know, I always make a statement. I always, you know, I always look good when I go out there and, and I'm at my best. So I just want to go out there, have some fun on Saturday night, come out with the win. And then, you know, we'll uh, talk about what's next. 
how's that environment for you? We, we heard some different things from Benavides and whatnot and, and, and Angelo Leo as well. Uh, how are you uh, settling into that environment up there in Connecticut? It's the calm before the storm. I'm just relaxing. You know, my weight's good, I'm ready to weigh in, um, fuel up and then fight on Saturday night. All right, man, have a great time and, uh, you know, wish you the best Saturday night. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We have just one more question for you, Erickson. It comes from Bakari Simpson. Bakari, if you unmute, you can go ahead. What's going on, man? How you feeling? I feel great. That's great. You know, uh, I, I'm always uh, fascinated with the, a lot of the mental aspect of the game. And so when, uh, when you took the uh, loss to Charlo, there have been other fighters who have uh, been broken or lesser than after, you know, such a loss or on such a big stage. And so for you, you appear to have bounced back mentally and you, you back 100%. But how did you absorb that loss? Did, did you kind of bounce back fast or was it like a process? I mean, everything's a process <clears throat> after taking a loss. Um, I just made a few changes in my life um, outside the ring. And then um, I got with Kevin and, you know, just, you know, got a stronger team. And, you know, we, we, we work and we work hard in camp. Um, my confidence level has always been high. Even after the loss, I, I, I didn't, you know, it, it didn't break my confidence. And I, I knew that's what I needed to bounce back. And that's what I did. I just, you know, kept training, kept, you know, I stood the course. That's what's up. And so uh, obviously uh, Coach Cunningham has a reputation for being, you know, strict and uh, a very disciplined uh, coach. But for you personally, since you all have been working together, how has he, um, in, what would you say the greatest way that he has improved you or, you know, advanced your, uh, your skill set? Yeah, he's definitely advanced my skill set. Um, um, also, also he's hands on. So he's there every step of the way during training camp. When I'm running, he's there. When I'm in strength and conditioning, he's there. So, you know, um, just working with him, I, I knew I would get my game to another level and, you know, being able to adjust in the ring, whatever he, he calls out, you know, he, he's hands on with me. So, you know, um, that definitely uh, boosted my, my game to another level. And so you've said a number of times that, you know, you're not necessarily chasing any particular fighter, but you're chasing the belts. And so of the belts, uh, do any of the uh, belts mean anything more than the rest of you? And if so, which one? Well, I'm, I'm number one in the WBC right now. So um, if, 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 um, if none of them boys want to fight, they're going to have to give up that belt, the WBC belt. But um, I'm sure, I'm sure that those are tough guys and they, they're willing to fight anyone. And, you know, uh, after I take care of business on Saturday night, we're looking forward to uh, fighting one of those guys, whoever comes out on top between Charlo and Rosario. We're going to get it on for all them belts. That's what's up. And so uh, last, uh, well, fairly early in your career, you had a lot of notoriety and you got on TV pretty fast. And so, you know, you, you had a, a light on you pretty early. And so obviously you got your mind on, the, uh, on getting your, your hands on a belt. But are there any up and coming fighters that you kind of got your eye on that you would look forward to fighting in the future? Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of good up and coming fighters. Um, none specific, but um, you know I got my eyes on everybody. I, I watch boxing from prospects to you know champions to Hall of Famers. I watch everybody. Bet. All right, man. That's uh, that's pretty much all I got. So you know I wish you all the luck for your fight. Thank you. All right, Erickson, thank you very much for the time. Uh, I want to thank all the press for joining us and for great questions today. Great responses from you, Terrell, and all the fighters on the card. Um, looking forward to a, a big night. It's back-to-back -back weekends for Showtime Boxing. September 19th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, three-fight card uh, live on Showtime, followed by a big pay-per-view event on the 26th of September. As we've mentioned here many times, the unification fight between Jermel Charlo and Jason Rosario. So a lot going on at 154, very deep, interesting division. Um, and we see some connectivity between this Saturday and the following week. So, uh, so looking forward to it. Um, thank you very much, Erickson. Good luck. Heading ready for the weigh-in. And uh, we will see you on Saturday night. All right. See you.